Welcome back to the Heads Up Show. Today we are talking about face mask reconditioning. What is face mask reconditioning? How does it work? And what happens when you go to greengridiron.com to buy a face mask? So all of our face masks on our website look like this, bare metal. We dip to your specifications and we have 35 or so standard colors. I'm gonna go through the entire process of how it works when you send in a mask to get reconditioned and how the process works when you buy a new mask. So you go to greengridiron.com, you hit face masks, and you pick, I don't know, an SF2BD, and you want it in Green Bay Gold. This is how it looks before we get our hands on it. We take your order, we pull it off the shelf, it gets heated up, and then the metal gets to a certain temperature, it gets dipped in a virtually indestructible plastic that essentially sticks to the metal. It then stays in there for a predetermined amount of time, depending on the style and the color. It gets taken out, it gets put in the oven, and then out it comes looking nice and shiny like a clear coated masterpiece. If you go to the website and you buy a face mask, you might see, hey, there's a restocking fee if you return this. Well, this is why. And we've had people in the past say like, I don't understand, why would you charge a restocking fee if it came and um, you know, I didn't even use it, it's brand new. Well, let's say you buy this mask in scarlet red, but then it comes and you're like, oops, I ordered the wrong thing and you send it back. Well, we have to take this mask and strip it down to bare metal because we don't stock red masks, we stock masks. So this would get brought back down to bare metal. Somebody else is going to buy it in say orange, that will get dipped in orange and then out it goes. So there's a cost attached to us whenever something has to come back to us. Let's talk about reconditioning masks. So whether you are you know, the Dallas Cowboys or a local high school, you get the exact same treatment, which is perfection. <laughs> so this is a standard mask that would come into us, right? Has five, four, maybe six or seven points of metal showing, but this is a pretty good mask. Nothing looks wonky with it. This would get stripped down to this bare metal. At that point, it would get inspected to make sure there are no weld breaks or anything wonky going on with it. If it's too spread or if there's really bends in there, then we can't certify it for field use. They would then get put back into production line. It gets dipped in either the exact same color or in any color that you choose and then gets shipped and packaged and sent back to you. We work with a lot of the NFL teams, a lot of NCAA teams, hundreds and hundreds of high schools throughout the country. So we're dipping tens of thousands of masks per year, all by hand. We find that's the only way to get this level of perfection. And you can see how the exact same color looks after a few games or a whole season versus brand new. I mean, this is just a powder coat, plastic, and it looks shiny. I mean like car paint, it's really awesome. So I just wanna show you some examples of what you can do. Let's say you have this mask here for your Riddell Speed and you have it in scarlet red. Even if it's brand new or if it's you know eight years old and you're like, man, I really want that to be blue. Well, here you go, we can do that. Or say you want it to be burnt orange or lime green or you get it. Anything that you can imagine can be done with the powder coat colors. Do not, do not, do not spray paint your face masks and then go out and play on the field. I promise you, you are gonna upset that other team instantly because it's going to come off. Noxy recommends no more than five points of metal showing. Send that in, get it recoded. Individual masks are about 25 bucks and team discounts apply when you have over 25 masks. And once you break 50 or 100 masks, the price just keeps going down and down and down. So uh, I will provide links in this video where you can reach out to us for your team or your youth league or for just your own personal masks. And we can set you up with face mask recon. 
Let's talk about the possibility of you as an individual or you as a team sending in a mask or masks that get rejected. The reason why they would get rejected is if they spread. So for example, if you hold these two up to each other, boom, they should line up. Well, sometimes after repeated, repeated, repeated hits, they'll actually mush in and this would become wide, right? We would not allow that to get dipped and sent back to you as a field use face mask. The teams are pretty much aware. We have our team rep contact you and say, hey, you sent in 500 masks, four of them got rejected. They can either opt to buy the replacements from us or just say, ah, it's okay, just throw them away. For an individual, you only have one mask and you send this mask in and man, that thing is just gnarly. And we say, we can't pass this. After inspection, we just, we just can't. We call you up or write you and say, hey, listen, your mask um, is too far gone. And we give you the option of, we can still strip it and dip it, but we will not certify it. So these masks, as you'll see on the inside, they have writing with a Noxy number. They'll either say Riddell, Shut, Green Grid Iron. We will not put that sticker on there for you to actually play with because sometimes people know that the masks aren't great and they don't care. They just want them as a trophy to say, put on their shelf. They're not actually gonna go on the field with. On a shelf, they may look fine, even though there's a hair fracture of a weld break. Um, we just can't let face masks deemed unsafe to be allowed back out on the field because that's how people get hurt. You know, these face masks are football helmet face masks. They're not going on space shuttles. So they're not built to like, you know, SpaceX, Tesla, NASA level specs. Sometimes the masks vary. Uh, as a matter of fact, the eye guards can, you know, they can be in or out a quarter inch. Sometimes the, you know, the upper bars might have a little tweak in them. That's very normal, brand new out of the manufacturers. They just vary. They're still fine. It's just, you know, they're, they're, they're pieces of metal. So, um, you know, they're, they're built with quality, but at the same time, you have to expect a little bit less than museum level quality. If you're a team or an individual and you send in an old mask to get reconditioned and then you want it to come back to you brand new, depending on the season, again, you're not looking at any more than three weeks. Um, if it's the very busy season, so the NFL and the big college teams, they send in their masks, say, April and May. They really need them back by, definitely by August for preseason. But they're sending in thousands and thousands of masks. So during that time, the lead time is more like five or six weeks. But again, that's pretty rare. We're usually two or three weeks. Let's talk about how long do these things last? I mean, it's a really loaded question, but let's just uh, cover some generalities. So you buy a brand new face mask or you send in a face mask to get reconditioned and then bam, you got a nice, shiny, pretty face mask. Well, depending on your position, if you're a lineman or if you're a kicker, that's an extreme difference, right? So um, most high schools in the country will get an entire season out of a recoat or a new coat. Um, yeah, at the end of the year, they're boogered up. I mean, they, they look beat up, but they're okay. Uh, the NFL, NCAA, the big schools, one game. Every single game, they swap them out because you gotta look good for TV, right? So no scuffs, no gouges, none of that. At the end of every game, the equipment managers work really, really hard. They take all the face masks off. They bolt on nice, shiny new ones. They put the banged up ones in a box. They send them to us. We strip them, redip them, and around and around it goes. So um, if you are a wide receiver or a kicker or somebody who isn't making too much contact, you could potentially get, I don't know, two, three years out of a mask before you need to get it recoded again. You should never go more than a whole season if you have five or six points of metal showing then because now you can cut other people if there's metal hanging out. You're going to gouge other helmets. Um, so for the player safety and for equipment safety, not just because it looks better, you should get it reconditioned. If you have a lightweight mask, a carbon steel, a titanium, stainless steel, 
doesn't matter, it gets the same treatment. There are a couple things to keep in mind though. This is a TX LW mask, lightweight. Usually you can tell because the brows up here kind of um, look like they're angry. Lightweight masks are just that. They are very light. They're light because these bars, even though they look very thick, they're hollow. And at the edges, they get pinched. Well, when you take the powder coat and you are coating something that has hollow holes in it, you will almost always see this. Most people know, and not only is it acceptable, but that's just how it is, right? You might not know that though. And we've had a few people who have been upset with her like, oh, what the heck, I bought a brand new mask and why does it have this? Um, that's just how it is. Uh, these are um, hollow. So there's no way to actually cap these off to stop the powder coat from going in. This is completely normal and this is within the specs brand new from every manufacturer or reconditioner. So we can do an entire other video on just the face mask uh, materials and styles. That's, that's for damn sure because there's the stainless steel and HS4, which are the most common. HS4 have two lines here, stainless has one. They're thinner. Um, the thinner they are, the longer they have to stay in the powder coat so it gets the same thickness all the way uh, around. If you have a lightweight mask, you need to adjust your face mask hardware to be a bigger diameter because the um, you can see here, this is a coated stainless mask and this is a coated lightweight mask. The bars are definitely thicker. So your face mask hardware that fits on this, you wouldn't be able to fit on this. And if you use the face mask hardware that fits this on this, it's gonna rattle around. Now let's talk about custom paint, chroming, nickel, and all that stuff. We do offer those services for teams. It's not really a great idea to just get one done. So say you're a collector and you really want a chrome face mask or you're a player and you want a chrome face mask. Well, you have to realize we don't do that stuff in house and by nature, it's an expensive process. So there are setup fees and it takes a few weeks to get done. We do a lot of chrome and nickel for some of the big colleges, but you have to understand they only last a game or two until they get really banged up. So they're not using them all season, that's for sure. Oftentimes the big schools, they'll get a bunch of masks made in Chrome for one game. So I hope that this answers your questions. I know that this is a topic that I think you all wanna hear about. We usually do a video about once per year on this. Um, I try to answer everything, but if I miss something, sorry, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, Go ahead and give me a thumbs up and until next time, cheers.